Hello there, very good evening and a warm welcome to Newsline Live. My guest this evening is an economist, a homegrown one at that, meaning that uh, much uh, uh, needed dollars weren't spent in his education. Um, homegrown uh, from the Kegol district, he's also the vice chairman of the SJB. We're delighted to welcome on to Newsline Live Mr. Kabir Hashim. Very good evening to you, Kabir, and uh, welcome to the program. Yeah. Evening, Faraz. Thank you for having me. So, uh, Kabir, I just wanted to uh, just clarify this point. You're, you're an economist, really. You've got your BA and then you have your Masters, both in economics. Yes. Um, from Sri Lankan University. So you're homegrown, homemade. Yes, very much. And that's held you in good, uh, good stead all these years. It has. have had more understanding of challenges in Sri Lanka and being able to be more sensitive to Sri Lankan issues. But you've also uh, done, uh, done work internationally and been open to the international fora. Yes, yes. Served, uh, worked overseas as an economist under various agencies mm. and uh, had experience. So that's helped me further. But you also worked in um, some jolly places like Afghanistan. Yes, I worked as a consultant for the UN and then uh, various other organizations in Afghanistan, Pakistan, Vietnam, Laos, mm. Philippines. So with all this background and, uh, and your, your solid uh, educational background, um, how do you see uh, the current situation economically speaking? Everyone's talking about these uh, uh, international sovereign bonds, uh, this group of people who are saying, look, you need to reschedule. Uh, others are saying, some of them are the same, or saying about uh, the need to go to the IMF. Uh, but um, the central bank uh, and this government don't seem minded to go that route. What's the problem and how, how do you solve this? What do you do with the ISBs? What is your stance on that? Well, Sri Lanka has faced many uh, uh, crises before. Yeah. And Sri Lanka has been able to face it successfully, get over it. Uh, because we've uh, at most times taken prudent decisions mm. uh, which have been professional rather than political. In 2020, uh, when this government started having this problem, they, this problem was not because of the COVID. Mm. It's very clear that it was uh, uh, the government is responsible for creating the problem because they cut the government revenue. Mm. We lost something like 600 billion a year. And the moment revenues dropped, and, and these they, are the tax cuts. The so tax cuts, mm. and mobi but the moment the international uh, uh, community felt, especially the capital markets felt that Sri Lanka was going to have a huge deficit, they discounted our ISBs, our bonds. Mm. You know, by uh, it, they began to discount it even before the rating agencies. Uh, rated us down. Mm -hmm. So it was not a case of the downgrading that caused this. It was spontaneous reaction from the international community. Right. And the government then subsequently, we as the opposition told the government, we uh, were telling them that they should correct the position, but they didn't uh, make any move. They just went on the same road. Mm -hmm. It became worse. ISBs, then the downgrading came. And now we have no option, but we have no way to go and borrow through any international market at low interest rates. Mm. We have, uh, we also don't work with the multilateral agencies. So in the alternative, if you look at the steps that this government has taken, it is a question of trying to sell the country and pay debts. Basically, that's exactly what the government is trying to do. You, you mean sell the country as in uh, sell state assets? Sell state assets because uh, I have very clearly uh, the, the cabinet paper that was put forward by uh, Mr. the Minister of Finance, Mr. Yeah. Lassil Rajapaksa, yeah. uh, where he's speaking about how uh, he's going to raise revenue and uh, to try and get dollar earnings. And he's talking about selling national assets. He's talking about uh, getting uh, the Mahavali lands for foreign companies to take over. Mm. And if you look at the action that's already taken, if you see what happened to the oil tanks yeah. in Trincomalee, yeah. that is, th there was no negotiation. There was no legal uh, handover to India. For the first time, they hand over the entire oil tanks to India without a single agreement on any investment, dollar investments from India. It's virtually given free. And if you look at uh, what they have done with the uh, 
other areas, the the uh, power generation plant with the U.S. what they negotiated yeah. <coughs> with Yugadanavi. Yeah, these are sellouts. And uh, if the government is looking at finding foreign money dollars by selling our assets, then that is not a solution to the current debt crisis. Is the uh, Trinco, uh, Trincomalee oil tanks uh, sort of give, giving it away, uh, signing with the Indians? Uh, is that sort of, uh, do, you, do you think there's a prelude to uh, some form of uh, agreement that Mr. Basil Rajapaksa may be reaching with the Indians in terms of some assistance? Well, uh, at the moment when uh, Mr. Basil Rajapaksa went to India, he spoke about getting a $500 million loan for petroleum mm. and a $1.5 billion uh, swap from India. These are both loans, mm. right? In, and just for the agreement of getting some a loan from India, they offered uh, oil tanks. And it also is going to uh, have some impact on oil security in the country. They haven't negotiated it as an investment. There is no, uh, it's worth a couple of million dollars, a few billion dollars actually, but they didn't negotiate with India to get any kind of payment. The agreement is just based on a $500 million loan that they are getting from India. So what, that what, was the, what was the original, uh, because it was the uh, uh, Vikram Singh government way back who gave the, uh, uh, some of the oil tanks uh, to the IOC at the time. Mm -hmm. um, what was the agreement then? Wasn't it to take all the uh, tanks or was it only to take partially? In that at that point, there were 14 oil tanks which were supposed to be used by the IOC, and the rest of the oil tanks were to be shared. But there was no, there was no legal agreement. It was only a uh, MOU hmm. signed, and for the, the MOU balance. for everything. Okay. Even the 14 tanks were not legally handed over. Right. And there is enough proof to say that there was absolutely uh, no uh, provision of having handed it over. Mm. So basically this government that came into power mm. in, from 2005, mm. they've been uh, threatening to take this back. Right. And if it's very clear, there's a letter written to the Minister of Energy, mm. that is Uday Gamman Pillar, on November uh, 6th this year, mm. uh, in 2020, I'm sorry, yeah. in 2020, very clearly saying, you know, in this paragraph, this shows what the situation is. The tank farm agreement mentions that the lease agreement shall be executed within six months from the date of tank farm agreement which was signed in 2003. Mm. LIOC has repeatedly strived to ensure the execution of this lease agreement which includes continuous engagement at all levels in the government of Sri Lanka for the past 17 years. Despite these efforts, the lease agreement has not been executed till date. So which clearly proves... Who's writing this letter? This is uh, Gupta. Yeah. Uh, he's From Manoj, the IOC. Manoj Gupta is the managing director for IOC. And he's right. writing to He's writing minister. to Mr. Udaya Gamanpilla saying that these tank farms have not been given legally to us. Mm. The government's position was when they come into power they will take these tanks back and they will, ca they will, they will take over the whole thing and so develop it on their own. Irrelevant of the irrelevant. This was a political slogan on the stage. This, and as you know, this government was very focused on saying they will not have, they will not sell any assets, they will not look at giving any uh, uh, assets which have, which will affect our security, mm. right? But from this, it very clearly proves that the government sold this out because they are financially uh, st stuck, they cannot pay dollars, and they have started beginning to give our uh, key assets away which jeopardizes our oil security. Mm. It jeopardizes a lot more. So it also goes with the CEB, it also goes with the ports. You know, it's, there are two, there's a huge difference between investments and sellouts. If you look at the investments, right, there is, uh, what you look at is investments should be autonomous. Mm. That is where you have capital coming into the country. That was like the FTZs and the garment factories under uh, late J.R. Javadan and late our Premadasa. Mm. Foreign capital came in, but this is selling out. You know, only a change of name 
of ownership from government to some foreign company and they're just taking over our assets. So what you're, uh, what you're really complaining about taking umbrage is that there is no agreement, there's no plan of action on how this can benefit Sri Lanka. Yes. That, the, that's yes, line. yes. These are not investments. Yeah. I, I consider <coughs> these as not investments but these as sellout mm. of the country uh, country's key assets, critical assets, uh, which uh, creates an issue of uh, national security. A, it, it raises issues of national security mm. because at the moment our refinery is closed and they are making up certain provisions to try and even sell the refinery. The refinery has been closed for a few months now. The main reason is because they don't have the dollars to import crude oil. Mm. Right? So in a sense, the yeah. ISBs <coughs> are an issue when the government says that they have reserves, that they can pay the dollars, then why aren't we getting down oil on time? We are having issues where the oil is not being supplied. Already the CEB is having problems. Mm. Right? There are shipments in the port. There was a vessel that was couldn't unload for 14 days. Mm. They just started unloading today. Because and that that vessel had to pay a two hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars demerage mm. for hanging on so long, but the government didn't have dollars to pay. So if they had, they are talking about a three point five billion dollar reserve. Uh, but are, are you the, doubting the veracity of that statement? Of course, I'm doubting right? it because because we've asked the government, the parliament has not been informed of what this three point one billion dollars is. As far as we know, it's, the, it is a right for the parliament to know. From where they raise this $3.1 billion, what's the interest rate, what is the cost to the country, what are the terms and conditions, right? And for, as far as we know, this is what they have got as a swap, uh, a $10 billion remnibi from China, uh, which is actually a $1.5 billion, which is in, not in dollars, but in renminbi, which, yeah. is, uh, which cannot be used as dollars. And the IMF clearly, internationally states what can be considered as official reserves. Reserves should be easily converted into dollars for any international transaction. But if the government could convert this into international transactions, by now the government should have settled the oil bill. Mm. The government should have used the 3.1 <coughs> billion to settle the, the, the uh, ph pharmaceutical bill. Indeed. What, what, Mr. Hashim, what is the SJB's plan uh, to develop the economy? Uh, can you sort of give me at least five things that you that you yeah, might, well, party might want the to do? The first thing that we need to uh, do, I believe, is about setting up what you call international credibility mm. in the financial markets. Mm. Number one is credibility, because the moment your credibility improves, then you would find that there are people willing to uh, invest in Sri Lanka dollar investments will increase as much as we could will be open to resorting to borrowing at cheaper rates to pay off the loans that are outstanding at now so and international and credibility and so credibility for what that for that the first step this country has to take is to ensure that there is proper fiscal management in the country fiscal discipline and for that we need to be able to restructure our debt we should be able to prove that we can pay our debts for that the first step is to ensure that government revenue is uh, at a practical level. Government revenue should be sufficient. Mm. Uh, at the moment, our revenues are at something like 9.1% of GDP, which is the lowest ever, I think, in our history since uh, uh, independence. Mm. And as a result, there, there is a doubt about Sri Lanka's capacity to overcome payments. On the other hand, government has to have clear policies on uh, how it should have a trade policy. It doesn't have a trade policy. It uh, doesn't have an investment policy. Mm. It has to build capacities. We would look at doing this immediately. And we would think that restructuring the debt would have been one of the first steps that we would have taken. Because if you look at the world over, there are countries that have defaulted. Ecuador, Jamaica, Argentina. Most of these countries have ev eventually gone into restructuring and in restructuring the debt in three months time, four months time, in a short period, governments have started, those governments have shown that ratings have gone up. Their credit ratings have gone up and also their capacity to get in foreign investments have gone up. So at, this, at the moment, this government has not taken those steps. 
On the other count, yeah. what, we, what we would have thought is about actually raising, uh, improving our export earnings. If you look at uh, historically what happened in 1994, finally in 94, our export earnings were something like 32% of our GDP. Mm. Under this present, the same people who rule this country since 94, by 2014, exports dropped to 12% of GDP. Over that period. Over that period. And if you look at today, the, the president, even in his address yesterday, spoke about reduction of imports. But I don't think imports have reduced because the president, uh, I think, uh, should realize in 2014, our imports were something like $22 billion. Mm. Uh, by 2019, the Yahapalan government reduced imports to something like $17 billion. Okay. But today, in uh, Honorable Basil Rajapaksa's cabinet paper, he says imports this year will go up to something like $23 billion. Mm -hmm. And he's expecting a $32 billion export. However, in the last few, in these two years, mm. the country hasn't been able to achieve even $12 billion worth of exports. So from looking at it, there has to be some structural adjustments mm. in the fiscal sector. And the next step that we would take is to have a proper monetary policy rather than going on printing money. Yes. We would look at a proper monetary that, policy. That's, a, that's an interesting point. Let's go in for a quick break, uh, take a peek at uh, this evening's headlines from the primetime news team, and we'll see you on the other side of the break. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali. KDK, the leader in Indo air quality. Over 110 years in bringing you the best of Japanese innovation and technology. KDK, the reliable fan. Valuable Finance, best finance company. Gamini Senrat replaces BB Jasundra. A few loan from India, free rice from China. Will the Chinese stock of rice be organic? Kalanitisa shuts down once more. Will there be power outages at night? Cancel the Trincomalee oil tank deal. JVP up in arms. Did former President Chandrika Bandara Nayaka exact political revenge? One disinfectant to keep your hands, home surfaces, electronic devices and personal belongings safe from bacteria, virus and fungi. Sri Lanka's first SLS certified disinfectant. Now with lemon fresh and ice pine fresh fragrances. Sun all-purpose disinfectant spray. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali. Welcome back to Newsline Live. I'm in conversation with Mr. Kabir Hashim, who is the Vice Chairman of the SJB and uh, an economist by training, a uh, homegrown variety. Uh, many questions from the general public. Thank you very much for your questions. Um, most of them are actually, uh, Mr. Hashim, uh, around the same figure uh, or the same theme, which is, what is the plan of the SJB to raise dollars uh, here in Sri Lanka? Well, the first thing we would do is to restructure because, you know, uh, unlike what this government thinks, you can't raise dollars in a couple of uh, weeks or months. Uh, even, even their strategy of trying to sell assets is not going to be successful because people are not going to invest uh, in this current condition when they know the country is at crisis. Mm. So the first thing we would do is, as I said, to ensure 
uh, credibility in the capital markets internationally, we would ask, we would go in for restructuring our debt. We believe that's critical. Uh, would that not affect the credibility of our country? No. To the I, to I, I just said that uh, there are many countries who have done it. You look at the lessons, like from Ecuador, Jamaica, Argentina. Uh, I can give you a number of examples. Ukraine, mm. they restructured. For When you restructure debt, it takes about three to four months where you have a slight drop mm. in your uh, ratings, and then your ratings go up. You start moving, right? Most countries have moved up their ratings within three to four months and then you have dollars flowing in you're mm. coming back mm. so that's one thing through that you get your uh, international credibility going you have breathing time and uh, what happens it's not by paying debt that the rating agencies uh, give you a better rating rating agencies rate you based on your ability to pay future debt so just because we made the 500 million dollar payment today it doesn't mean that your ratings go up internationally because what is the capacity to pay the balance seven billion dollars by the end of this year mm. Sri Lanka's capacity to pay that has become lesser and lesser so unless we correct that position we are not going to move forward that's why we believe restructuring is very important secondly we would do a fiscal consolidation when you look at fiscal consolidation the first thing is we would take action to increase government revenue without hurting the industry because we have gone through a crisis you can't increase taxes but you can broad base your tax you can you have to increase your government revenues without hurting people you have to be ha, have the economic skills to do that Will you reverse the tax breaks we would when we say reverse the tax breaks it's not about increasing the tax rates but mm. to be able to increase thresholds sometimes to be able to get a wider number of people who are not paying their taxes to get in mm. you know and broad base our taxes then we we believe that we can increase our revenues to at least 20 percent of gdp because so you need to move up to that level so you, right down. you say that you go uh, you reschedule does this mean that you go to the imf it is about you know the imf is something that people think will put conditions i would like to ask this government in 2006 during the war the highest ever imf loan hmm. taken by any government after independence was by uh, the mahindra rajapaksa government in 2006 they took in 2.8 billion dollars from the imf hmm. but IMF didn't put any conditions to stop the war or anything like that. Mm. You should be able to negotiate with IMF. We believe that if you're a strong government, yeah. you know what you're doing, you can talk to the IMF, get them to give that credibility to the international market without hurting people but, here. Mr. Ashim, uh, I think, was it in 2016 in, in, in the uh, parliament government, um, you all did uh, things that were sort of put forth by the IMF. Uh, the the or things like that. The uh, the dollar was floated. It moved from 130 to about 178. Uh, yep. The prices of uh, uh, fuel and so on went up. Um, was that a good experience? How can you ever think like that for us? The the, I, I the structural ask. adjustments were yeah. not because of IMF. Mm. We did the structural adjustments because we believed that was good for the country. Right. And and yeah. was, it a, good, and, was and, it a good experience? And, and, and that period, yeah. when we took over in 2015 and when we gave back the government in 2019, mm. in the first time in Sri Lanka's history, we reduced prices of all essential food items. Mm. Between 2000 and 2000, uh, 2015 and 2019, all the essential food items came down. Gas prices came down, fuel prices came down. Right, despite the fact that we do did some restructuring. <coughs> but now, but if, in if the same time, but in the same time, uh, according to central bank figures, um, uh, the during that government, uh, you actually lost four hundred thousand jobs. No, we did not lose. That's what the jobs. that's what the central bank. You you, you say. know you know the central bank figure also says that the the uh, uh, state employment mm. increased. I I don't have the exact percentages mm. with me, but I can tell you mm. that the increase in state employment was much higher between mm. 2015 and 2019, uh, more than the percentage right through the Rajapaksa regime. So there was no cut in jobs. Employment-wise, we were ahead. Inflation we, was we at the lowest. We must get the central bank to clarify that. Now, uh, another view, uh, uh, viewer is asking uh, this very political question. Uh, is it true to say that 
all successive governments trade on the failure of the incumbent government so that they come in but when they come in they don't do much anyway and so they fail and the next lot the previous lot come back in so it's almost like vultures like political vultures this game because you know it, like you've got 60 is it 60 MPs in parliament 56 now? 56 um, what are you guys doing are you plotting a plan a, a proper structured plan to put into action the minute you come into power of course because you've the, got all the, good good people with well you. I would say that uh, the previously uh, up to 1994 mm. there was a continuous part where the United National Party was in government under J.R. Uh, Premdas yeah. that government and up to that point there was the responsibility we could take of saying that we've changed the country structure Ca the country's indicators had gone up to international levels we could match any other economy but from 1994 the, the best part of this period from 94 to 2014 uh, 20 this country has been ruled where the the head of the country has always been somebody from the SLPP of course they came on the UPA yes, yeah. names. But, but, right? uh, so I'll, I'll answer so this I question because we've got two minutes yeah. left uh, what's the plan what, what do you 56 SJB people is, doing SJB was not looking at just grabbing power for the last two years we were the opposition we were trying to explain to the government what they should do but the government no hasn't point. listened but, but, but right now we are talking as the alternate government not as the opposition anymore because we believe the country is down a road to disaster we had we are a new party we are thinking differently we believe that there has to be a framework change a restructuring altogether it's not like just you know uh, uh, doing these small adjustments we are trying to get loans short term. No, we need to do restructuring. We are willing to do that. That's why we said we need to increase our revenues. We need to increase our exports. We think that the dollar to some extent has to be floated because if anyway, today the dollar, though they keep it at 210, you can't buy dollars at 240 or 245 rupees. If you do that now, at least the dollar will stabilize. But by what they are trying to do at the moment, it will get worse. So we've We've thought about a fiscal policy, a monetary policy, an adjust, readjustment, restructuring. We have a export policy. We have a trade policy in place. We are, we are, and you we, have a we are trying policy. to build our competitiveness. And one of the important things is economic diplomacy. Uh, diplomacy. If you are not competitive in the international market, and if you don't have economic diplomacy that you can talk to various countries and get investments at that level and not do sellouts for the country, then you can't go ahead. So the SJB has been working on this. We have also developed our uh, vision for the party. Our policy is very clear. We've, uh, we have developed a social market economy program and we are ready to implement it. We are going to announce it to the country. And as a new party, we are thinking newly. But it will be a structural change do you think, within the country. Do you think, uh, last and final question, do you think that uh, you will wait the full three years to, to claim power? It's not about whether we will wait the full three years. It's about whether the people of this country will give this government the full three years. What it's up to the government to put the country back. Hmm. We would pray that they would put the country back because we are not in a hurry to grab power. Mm. But if they can't do that, then at one time, at any time, we are ready. And you've got a plan. We have a plan. We have a plan. We have explained part of the plan. We are coming out with our vision document. And we think that it will be a proper structured plan. Well, you know, um, uh, Kabir Hashim, thank you very much for being on Newsline uh, Live. I have a little token of appreciation for your, um, your appearance on uh, this program. Um, when they play the camera, we can actually get a better shot of it. It's a hand-painted painting uh, by our very own Hemant Warakapiti, and it's my great pleasure to give you uh, this. Uh, it's hand-painted. This uh, it's number three, actually, in a, in the series. So I appreciate it. I only hope that uh, in the coming months we won't ha go to a level of not having fuel and having to go. Yes, in it's the a, unfortunately it's a bl transport. bullock cart. So uh, yes. I hope this is just a picture of the past and not of the future. It's one of the past. Thank you. Uh, but it's, you'll notice it's all green. <laughs> <laughs> all right, there we go. Uh, thank you very much to Kabir Hashim uh, uh, for being on our program. And uh, as always, take care and God bless you.